Good morning, dear friends. I am Dr. Anuradha Rahul Deshmukh from Aster Clinic, Mohesna. Today, the topic given to me is polycystic ovaries. Polycystic ovaries is very important topic to discuss because almost 15 to 20 percent of patient is suffering with this, and they are not unaware. They are not aware uh, of this fact that they are having polycystic ovaries. So, polycystic ovaries firstly described by Steven Leventhal in 1935 and in 2003 by H2A criteria, it, uh, it shows that there are three criteria, for example, unovulation, hyperandrogenism and polycystic ovaries. If out of these three, two criteria will meet, then definitely it is a polycystic ovary. Now, what is the pathophysiology? As I told you, the polycystic ovaries is multifactorial and polygenic condition. So, what happens in, patho, uh, in polycystic ovaries is there is increased pulsation of GnRH hormone which will make, which will stimulate ovaries to form a LH hormone. So, the LH hormone levels increases comparatively to follicular stimulating hormone FSH hormone. There is a disparity between LH and FSH as the usually we found 3 is to 1 ratio in polycystic ovaries. Because of this, there is an ovulation and more follicles are formed inside the ovaries which will make that ovary in polycystic ovaries. Poly means multiple, cystic means small, small follicles. Okay. Because of this increased level of LH, there is the whole environment inside the ovary is deranged which is more androgenic. Because of that, there will be increased obesity and increased fat deposition, specifically truncal fat deposition. Okay. So, those patients who are having this problem, more androgenic environment, they will have more obesity. As obesity will increase, the insulin levels are also increased. So, there is a hyperinsulinemia and insulin resistance. Okay. So, these are the things we have to uh, know because of the derangement in FSH LH level. There is increased androgen levels inside the body. Androgens means male hormones in the body and there is hyperinsulinemia uh, associated with the polycystic ovaries. Now, this uh, other hormones like prolactin 15 to 20 percent are associated with this polycystic ovaries. That means there is a hyperprolactinemia and hypothyroidism 5 to 10 percent is associated with polycystic ovaries. So, what are the main complaints, how the clinical features, how the patients are coming to us? The patients are coming to us specifically with the menstrual irregularities. Mainly, they are not having a proper menses may two or three months or sometimes they are not having menses till six months with oligomenorrhea and less flow during menses, weight gain, hirucitism, abnormal hairs here on uh, chin or on <coughs> lips on breast and acne formation pimples will be there more the patient will give me history of suddenly she started gaining weight her menses are going haphazardly and she is developing pimples so if such history will given we usually there is uh, we prepare this diagnosis in our mind that maybe she is suffering with the polycystic ovaries the other group is that same problems will be there and if those who are married they are not able to conceive so infertility is another sign uh, complaint which will be given to us by patient now how we go how we diagnose if patient is giving this history that there is irregularity acne formation hirucitism weight gain then usually the clinical we fit this patient in the clinical criteria the laboratory criteria will be detection of hormones like FSH, LH, prolactin, thyroid, um, androgens that androsteodion, testosterone and if the patient is more obese that is BMI is more than 25 or 30 we refer her to do this insulin resistance test. If insulin also showing some high problem then definitely this patient along with polycystic ovaries is having hyperinsulinemia and by doing ultrasound. Ultrasound will give us 
criteria that if the ovaries is uh, ovarian volume if it is more than 10 cm per cube and they are having lot of follicles that is between 10 to 12 follicles of diameter 2 to 9 mm then definitely this ultrasonological criteria is for polycystic ovary. So depending upon the uh, depending upon the clinical criteria, laboratory criteria and bi radiologic criteria in which this patient is fitting according to that we have to give the treatment. Some patient, uh, patients will show yes there is a uh, um, difference means polycystic ovaries on the ultrasound but the all hormone levels are normal and little bit derangement in insulin level. So, Depending upon all investigations and, uh, and uh, laboratory criteria and ultrasound criteria, we have to treat this patient. So, those patients who are having menstrual irregularity with hirsutism, with uh, weight gain and hyperinsulinemia, usually we give this patient some oral contraceptive pills, estrogen and progesterone pills to regularize their cycle. If the patient is having hyperinsulinemia, then we start them with metformin. Nowadays, very good uh, drug is available in the market, inositol, myoinositol, decairoinositol, which also helps to reduce the level of insulin, means insulin resistance and help that lady to reduce weight as well as to form a good quality of egg. Now, this is for regularization cycle and uh, for uh, if there is insulin level but whichever patient is coming to us for the first time we give them trial of weight reduction and diet that patient should reduce at least 10 to 15 kg of weight if the patient's bmi is more than 30 and 10 kg if the bmi is more than 25 if they reduce weight insulin levels go goes down and automatically she will start ovulating and her menses will become normal so those patients who are obese with the bmi more they should take good guidance from dietitian and they should do aerobic exercise any kind of exercise like gymming swimming uh, more aerobic cardio exercise that will make them uh, that will help them to reduce their fat so first line of treatment is weight reduction, diet, second with medication and those who are coming to us with the same thing with infertility, we also give them some letrozole or clomiphene citrate to help them to form a good quality of egg to increase their infertility. The fertility. So uh, this is the line, mode of action, if the patient comes in with aerial get cycle, we have to give the, them different treatment, if the coming with infertility, we have to give them tr different treatment, if coming with insulin resistance, we have to start with metformin or myonicetol. If give, after giving this treatment, after 6 months, the patient gives very good, if, uh, good effects, very good reports, if the patient is not giving uh, history that she is uh, after giving uh, this treatment, she is not having any benefit or she is not changing her menstruation pattern, then it is very difficult, then we have to refer her for surgery for ovarian drilling. But nowadays ovarian drilling we don't do to the patient because they, this surgery has their another side effects. Now those patients with hirsutism, we usually take an opinion with our uh, dermatologist friends and we can start them with ciprotidone acetate and flutamide to reduce their <coughs> abnormal hairs. With giving estrogen progesterone pills and this definitely help them to reduce all androgen testosterone levels which will make the definitely the abnormal growth of hair. Now, uh, recent studies also show that vitamin D also helps in formation of polycystic ovaries. If there is a deficiency, it will give rise to unovulation and infertility. So, the patient with the polycystic ovaries and with the vitamin D deficiency, we have to treat everything. As I told you, we see for hyperprolactinemia and hypothyroidism. If the patient is having that problem, definitely we have to treat that uh, thyroid levels and prolactin levels also. Now, lot of patients will ask me, Madam, I have this irregularity cycle. So, uh, is it necessary that I should bleed every monthly or how, how many cycles I should bleed during one year? So, those who are having irregular cycles, they should at least minimum have four to six bleeding cycles in a year. Okay, so at least every two monthly she should bleed six cycles in a year. 
if that patient is not having less than three cycles or she is not having this proper menstruation cycle then this lady will have more estrogen inside her body which is dangerous to her because in a later age she may have breast cancer she may have endometrial cancer because of hyperestrogenism there will be more androgens and this lipidemia will be there so lipids will also increase she may have cardiovascular diseases and as she will become obese obese this patient will have higher insulin and she is more prone to develop diabetes okay so to avoid such complication minimum she should bleed six cycles in year preferably every monthly so that all hormonal imbalance should get normalized at the end of menstruation cycle so those patient is suffering with such problem like menstruation irregularity hirsutism obesity infertility alopecia they should immediately go to doctor and consult to get treatment so that they will have nice for the future thank you